Thank you, Ekshika. So, good evening, all of you today. Those who are joining this virtual program, we have today a presentation by Dr. Ramya Om Prakash, the final year postgraduate from Salem Medical College, who is going to present a case on cardiology case. And we have professor of medicine from uh, Salem Medical College, Dr. Energy and Sar is joining today. And we have associate professor of cardiology, Dr. Saranu Bhagusar, also joined today to discuss about this case on a cardiovascular system. I hope it's a probably occurred with well heart disease. We'll just uh, over to the presenter and the faculties for this evening, take over the further proceedings of this evening program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So good evening. Good evening to all present. Um, I'm Dr. Amya Omprakash. Today we're going to present a cardiology case. My patient is Mrs. Kala, a 38-year-old female who is a resident of Omalur, street vendor by occupation, who has not had any formal education, belonging to lower middle class. She has come with the chief complaints of breathlessness for two years, complaints of palpitations for six months, and complaints of bilateral leg swelling for two weeks. History of presenting illness. The patient is apparently normal before two years. Then she developed complaints of breathlessness for the past two years, which is insidious and onset progressive in nature. A uh, patient was initially noticed breathlessness when she was carrying water from the bore well, which she normally used to do, probably NIHA class 2. Then six months before, she started to have breathlessness when walking to home from the bus stand. For the past three months, she is unable to walk for even small distance from home, probably NIHA class 3. Hence, she stopped going to work and she went to a local hospital for medications. She found to be slightly better with medications but she stopped the medications for the past one and a half months. Then she developed complaints of frequent awakenings in the night for the past one month. She's feeling because she was feeling breathless and she used to sit for an hour until she felt better. History probably suggests of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea uh, belonging to NIHA class three. For the past two weeks, patient has been feeling breathless immediately after lying down for which she visited the nearby GH and was referred to her hospital for further management. History suggests of orthopnea uh, belonging to NIHA class 4. This breathlessness was not associated, associated with chest pain, cough or fever. It was associated with easy fatigability for the past three months. Patient doctor, had complaints. Doctor, sir? can I in, uh, intervene now? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one question, doctor. Uh, why yes, did you use the NIHA class here grading? Sir, uh, she had complaints of breathlessness and palpitations and leg swelling, sir. Breath complaints seem to belong to cardiovascular system, sir. Sorry, so, you are uh, sure that uh, she has cardiovascular disease? Sir, with the chief complaints, I thought we I'll go with NIHA classification. No, no. My sir. question is whether you are sure that she has a cardiovascular disease from the symptoms. Yes, sir. It points towards cardiovascular, sir. Now, what are the points uh, towards cardiovascular disease? Sir, uh, she is having breathlessness, palpitations and leg swelling, sir. She does not we, have any... We will analyze the breathlessness. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you think that this breathlessness due to? Sir, breathlessness might be because of... Uh, uh, seems to have uh, left heart failure and right heart failure symptoms, sir. No, no. Uh, it may be a respiratory cause also, no? Yes, sir. Maybe sure respiratory. It is, a, it is a cardiovascular cause. Maybe respiratory also, sir, but uh, she does not have any cough, sir. No cough, expectation, no fever, sir. So, her history is more suggestive of a cardiovascular disease. Yes, what sir. are the points favoring cardiovascular disease over the respiratory system? So, she does not have any cough, sir. Only breathlessness. Okay. Uh, she's having uh, complaints of palpitations. Uh, okay. And she's having bilateral leg swelling. Might be uh, a right, right heart failure, sir. And okay. she's having paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and orthopnea, which is okay. more in favor of a left heart failure, sir. Okay. She gives history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Is yes, it sir. specific to your cardiovascular system? Sir, it's mostly seen in left heart failure, sir. But can be can okay. also be seen in uh, COPD, sir. There is, what are the cardinal symptoms for cardiovascular system? So, okay. Each and every system. Can you hear me, Ramya? Hello? Sir? Here, the history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is very, very important. Okay? Yes, Here, yes, so, sir. you are uh, mostly you can 
PND only in heart disease. Okay. Yes, so sir. what is that paroxysm and nocturnal dyspnea suggest? Sir, suggest left heart failure, sir. Left heart failure. Very good. So you are invoking a NOH class here grading. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Proceed. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yes, sir. The, uh, cardinal symptoms of cardiovascular system. So every system has some cardinal symptom. So what the patient is yes, only these three symptoms which are which can occur even in uh, respiratory system also. Only on yes, probing, you are giving some leading question and getting the paroxysm of nocturnal dyspnea and orthopnea. No, patient doesn't say that, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's the conclusion. So the cardinal symptom, uh, cardiovascular cardiac symptom, it doesn't fit into the all the three doesn't fit into cardio uh, cardinal symptom. So respiratory system means you will have some unilateral chest pain, breathlessness, all these things, uh, cough with expectation. But in cardiac system, the cardinal symptom is mainly uh, chest pain. Chest, chest pain. It was called chest pain. Then uh, this uh, syncope, syncope, syncope. syncope. Very, very important syncope. Because most of the aortic wall lesion, they have this uh, cardinal symptom of syncope. To, and chest pain, retrosomal chest pain. Then breathlessness and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So uh, what the patient is, only these three symptoms, that is uh, breathlessness and uh, breathlessness, palpitation, and pale edema. So these are all, even though it is uh, uh, non-specific, but again, it can occur in cardiovascular as well as in uh, respiratory system also. But uh, orthopnea and PND is more in favor of cardiovascular system. This one type. Okay, carry on. Okay, sir. Out of the paroxysmal dyspnea and orthopnea, which is more specific for uh, cardiovascular system? Or both? Sir, orthopnea is more specific, sir. No, no, no. Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is more specific for cardiovascular system. What are the causes of orthopnea? Sir, um, orthopnea can occur in uh, left heart failure, sir. It can occur when there is a uh, massive pleural effusion. So, other in the system also, uh, grass ascites, ascites. Okay, COPD, uh, many cause, uh, conditions can cause, can pro produce orthopnea. But paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is more specific for a Cardiovascular. Cardiovascular. Okay. So yeah. you are already told that PND falls in NIHA class 3, no? Yes, sir. Arthopnea in class 4. Class 4. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, you are considering a cardiovascular system. You are considering yes, a left heart disease. So, suppose we consider it's a valvular heart disease. Uh, what do you think out from this history, which valve is more likely to be involved? The mitral valve or the aortic valve? Sir, uh, mitral valve is more probably to be involved, sir. On what basis you are telling this? Sir, uh, mitral valve uh, is more associated with pulmonary hypertension, sir. And no, uh, no. Uh, From the history, what you have narrated now, yes, you are coming to a conclusion whether uh, it is more likely to be a mitral valve or aortic valve. From the history. From, his you from history, it can, sir, it can be both, sir. Mitral or uh, you aortic. chances for both aortic valve and mitral valve equally. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, Paroxysmal doctoral dyspnea occurs more commonly in aortic valve disease or uh, mitral valve disease? Sir, mitral valve, sir. Mitral valve. Okay. What does this palpitation due to? It is regular palpitation or irregular palpitation? Sir, it is irregular, sir. Sir, what it can be? Sir, irregular might be because of atrial fibrillation, sir. Okay, suppose we consider it is due to atrial fibrillation. So, presence of atrial fibrillation is more favorable of a mitral valvular disease or aortic valvular disease? So, mitral valve disease, sir. So, up to this history, it's more going in favor of a mitral valve disease rather yes, than an aortic valve. Aortic valve predominant symptom will be syncope, Syn angina. angina. Okay, they are, not, they are absent here. Here, irregular palpitation and BND goes in more favor of a mitral, mitral valvular, valvular disease. disease. Suppose if it is a valvular heart disease. At this stage, okay. we are not going into conclusion. Okay, suppose if it is a valvular heart disease, it will be more in favor of a mitral valvular disease mitral valve rather disease. than a aortic valvular disease. Okay, okay. which uh, valvular disease uh, will have a longer duration, which will have a shorter duration of presentation? Sir, uh, mit mitral valve will have longer duration, sir. Okay. Right. Proceed, proceed. Sir, uh, patient had complaints of palpitations for the past six months. It is sudden and onset, uh, occurs in paroxysms, it's irregular in nature, there's no uh, precipitating, aggravating or relieving factors. 
and uh, the palpitations are not associated with prominent neck veins chest pain syncope or post palpitation diuresis uh okay. patient had come but what does the palpitations uh, according to your history uh, relate to so according to history it you might too. be because of uh, arrhythmia or atrial fibrillation sir okay uh, uh, apart from arrhythmias what other uh, conditions can cause palpitation sir uh, palpitations can be drug induced sir okay uh, palpitations can be because of change in the force of contraction of the heart which can occur in so case different of palpitation uh, different palpitation it is an unpleasant awareness of one's own heart beat sir it is only half the definition due to you already told due to sir it can be because of change in the rate rhythm or force of contraction of the heart yeah that is the full definition okay it can be due to the rate rhythm or force of contraction change okay so okay, uh apart from arrhythmias the force of contraction is changing and producing palpitation which conditions sir in case of uh, uh, cardiomyopathy sir in case of okay. ischemic heart disease okay in in volume overloaded conditions no can you get palpitation in aortic regurgitation yes sir okay so uh, so we have to differentiate whether it is due to uh, the change in the rhythm force. or change in the rate or change in the force of contraction in your case it is due to the change in the rate sir, and rhythm the, rate and, and rhythm. rhythm most probably an atrial fibrillation in your case okay right yes, proceed just a minute just a minute paroxysmal if told paroxysmal in nature yes sir so usually atrial fibrillation it will be divided into acute atrial fibrillation chronic atrial fibrillation so in mitral valve chronic mitral valvulation it is only chronic atrial fibrillation then it will be yes, persistently pr present persistent uh, paroxysmal paroxysmal we told paroxysmal i will explain that sir a patient feels that uh, it occurs in paroxysm sir paroxysms but generally uh, yeah. chronic atrial fibrillation generally in chronic chronic valvular heart uh, disease you will have uh, persistent and permanent uh, atrial uh, fibrillation permanent it will not be a paroxysm paroxysmal means generally Uh, sudden onset with uh, the resolution. It can be as yes. SVT spontaneous or uh, preventricular tachycardia or some other thing. But uh, here you told uh, uh, chronic atrial fibrillation will be a persistent one. So this is what somewhat uh, not called quantity. Okay, yes. carry on. So patient had complaints of bilateral leg swelling for the past two weeks. It was in serious and onset, progressive in nature. It is not associated with pain, redness, or fever. it is aggravated by sitting for a long time has no relieving factors it is not associated with abdominal distension reduced urine output facial puffiness right upper abdominal pain hematemesis melina or jaundice uh so uh, moving to negative history patient does not have no history of chest pain no history of syncope no history of recurrent respiratory tract infections no history of hemoptysis no history of uh, hoarseness of voice no history of difficulty in swallowing no history of blurring of vision slurring of speech or weakness of the limbs no history of fever no history of multiple joint swelling or pain or involuntary movements no history of oral ulcers increased hair loss or skin rashes past history patient gives history of multiple joint pain joint swelling and pain when she was 12 years old following fever which she got, which uh, got relieved by medications she was asked to take medications for a long time but uh, she was lost, she had lost uh, to follow up and six, and 3 months before patient had vis visited a nearby hospital where she was told to have a valve problem and started on medications uh, she felt well, she felt better and then she was in complaint to treatment for the past one and a half months so what does this history suggest that leg swelling and all that uh, that uh, knee swelling knee pain sir uh, in childhood uh, when she had multiple joint swelling and pain following fever might be because of rheumatic sir acute rheumatic fever sir so how will you diagnose acute rheumatic fever the diagnosis is by uh, modify jones criteria sir okay what is that uh, please explain sir uh, modify jones criteria we have major and uh, minor criteria sir Okay. We should have essential criteria in the presence of two major or one major, two minor criteria, sir. Um, okay. It it has been divided into uh, high risk population and low risk population, sir. Good. High risk population is classified based on uh, incidence of 
uh, acute rheumatic fever if it is uh, two or more than two per 1 lakh population in school going age group uh, and uh, more than one uh, one case of rheumatic heart disease in, uh, in per 1000 uh, population sir in all age groups if it is less than two or less than one it uh, it comes under low risk population sir in so case what of are the major criteria in major what criteria, are the minor criteria major criteria we have five sir we have uh, in in high risk population we have polyarthritis uh, polyarthralgia and monoarthritis uh, and then carditis uh, syndenam scoria subcutaneous nodules and uh, erythema marginatum in case of uh, low risk uh, the only changes uh, polyarthritis is only included as a as a major criteria sir in minor criteria and high risk population we have fever 38 degree celsius uh, we have increase in uh, uh, we have uh, Uh, mono arthralgia we have uh, elevated esr crp and we have prolonged pr pr intervals in ecg and in low risk we uh, we have uh, uh, polyarthralgia and we have uh, uh, again elevated fever of 38.5 degree celsius uh, increase in esr crp or prolongation of pr intervals sir okay what is the essential criteria essential criteria uh, the aso titer can be positive sir or anti dna uh antibody can be positive or th- throat swab for streptococcus can be positive sir okay you have diagnosed a case of acute rheumatic fever then uh, how will you treat sir uh, acute rheumatic fever we have to um, give uh, antibiotics sir first first uh, for primary pro- uh, treatment of the acute rheumatic fever we can give antibiotic uh, benzathion penicillin 1.5 uh, million 1.2 million units im stat sir or oral penicillin 500 mg we can give for bd it's the total units is uh, same for all persons sir uh, uh, patients who are less than 27 kg we have to give uh, uh, 6 million units sir very good doctor very good okay you proceed with your history so you should be thorough with the rheumatic fever and treatment prophylaxis everything okay okay sir okay proceed proceed the patient is not a known case of diabetes mellitus systemic hypertension ischemic heart disease pulmonary tuberculosis bronchial asthma chronic kidney disease cerebrovascular accident thyroid disorder seizure disorder patient does not have any drug no known drug allergies uh, there is only history of sterilization no history of any other surgeries personal history patient want to have a history of diabetes and hypertension sir uh, uh, diabetes and hypertension uh, in patients with diabetes and hypertension you can have ischemic heart disease sir more prone to have ischemic heart so disease so you want to rule out uh, is- uh, coronary artery disease coronary artery okay. disease sir. okay good proceed personal history patient is a non vegetarian has normal bowel and bladder habits a normal appetite patient has history of sleep disturbance for one month because of frequent uh, awakenings due to breathlessness there's no history of addictive behaviors so no high risk uh, sexual behaviors menstrual history patient has regular uh, 3 by 28 cycles normal flow had last menstrual period 2 weeks before uh, marital history patient is married for the pa- since 20 years of age it's a non consanguineous marriage obstetric history patient has two children both normal vaginal delivery both pregnancies were uneventful how this is still relevant here in a cardiovascular system sir uh, uh, usually intolerable lesions can uh, uh, pregnancy can uh, unmask a cardiac lesion sir especially intolerable sir, cardiac, cardiac lesions cardiac condition uh, pregnancy is contraindicated sir in you case would... of vasin mangerization tof uh, tetralogy of phallic uh, severe ms M, uh, severe ms as uh, oh, no. only eisenmenger and severe pulmonary hypertension uh, we have to okay other okay. thing high risk okay high risk okay sir oh, proceed coming to summary uh, my patient is a 38 year old female who was apparently normal before 2 years with a history of multiple joint pain and swelling in childhood presented with 2 years history of in serious onset progressive breathlessness which which progressed from naiha class 2 to naiha class 4 Uh, which is associated with history of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and orthopnea who was diagnosed to have valve disease 3 months before on irregular treatment she had associated paroxysms of irregular palpitations for the past 6 months and history of bilateral leg swelling for the past 2 weeks the probable system involved is cardiovascular system the patient has symptoms of left heart failure followed by right heart failure the probable diagnosis is an acquired valvular heart disease probably rheumatic in etiology 
having stenotic or regurgitant or both types of lesion uh, can, can be involving mitral valve alone or both mitral and aortic valves. Other differentials which I would like to consider uh, still is uh, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy and ischemic heart disease. Okay. Uh, can this be any congenital heart disease? Sir, uh... ASD usually presents for, for either in early childhood, sir, or in 40 years of age. Okay. How how uh, ASD present? Atrial septal defect will present? Atrial septal defect presents as a... Uh, as uh, symptoms of uh, right heart failure, sir, in case of 40 years old. Mainly palpitations. They will present with arrhythmias. Okay, palpitations. Okay. Uh, can it be a bicuspid aortic valve? Uh, because history is more in favor of mitral disease, sir, but can can be bicuspid are, also. Sir. Okay, more in favor of a mitral valve disease is uh, considering iot uh, aortic valve bicuspid or down in the list. Okay, very good. Can be a tetralogy of fellow? Sir, uh, there is no history of cyanosis or any spotting episodes, sir, in childhood. Uh, okay, so what is your uh, inference? Summary from the summary. Sir, uh, patient probably might have an acquired valvular heart disease, rheumatic etiology, stenotic lesions, sir, involving mitral or regurgitate. Why, why you are lesions. invoking a rheumatic etiology here? Sir, because she is uh, giving, uh, because most common cause for valvular heart disease is rheumatic. And uh, because she gives history of uh, childhood, Suppose she's having multiple. The patient multiple... doesn't give a history of uh, rheumatic fever. Okay. And then uh, what will be your etiology? Sir, uh, only, uh, around 50% of the patients don't remember rheumatic fever you episodes. See, sir. You, are, uh, Still, you have to, uh, consider, have to consider rheumatic, rheumatic fever. Only even the uh, rheumatic fever history is not there. 50% of uh, patients will not have the history of rheumatic fever. So, still we have to consider rheumatic fever. Okay, no, as the uh, easier. Okay, good. Pratik. General examination. Uh, patient is conscious oriented. She is moderately built and nourished. Height of 156 centimeters, weight of 60 kgs. She does not have pallor, ictris, cyanosis, clubbing, or no significant lymphadenopathy. She has bilateral pitting pedal edema. Has no external markers which is suggestive of atherosclerosis, congenital heart disease, acute rheumatic fever, or infective endocarditis. What are the cardiovascular causes of clubbing? There uh, can be cyanot congenital cyanotic heart disease, infective endocarditis, Eisenmenger syndrome. Or uh, atrial uh, myxoma, sir. Okay, okay, proceed. Vitals, uh, the pulse rate was 76 per minute. It was irregularly irregular, variable in volume. Pulse rate, pulse rate how much? Sir, 76, sir, per minute. Hello, sir. Per minute. Sorry, yeah. So it was ir irregularly irregular, variable in volume. There's no special character. It was felt bilaterally in all peripheral pulses equally. There's no radio radial or radio femoral delay. The vessel wall, there's no vessel wall thickening. The pulse deficit was 14, sir. Uh, the blood pressure, it was 104 bar uh, uh, 70 millimeters of mercury in the right upper limb, measured in, uh, in supine position. 100, 100 bar uh, 70 millimeters of mercury in left upper limb, 110 bar 75 millimeters of mercury in right lower limb, and 112 bar 70 millimeters of mercury in left lower limb. The average of three readings of blood pressure in the right upper limb was 102 bar uh, 70 millimeters of mercury. Just a minute. Why there is uh, pulse deficit is very less? You told uh, uh, the atrial fibrillation with a irregular, irregular pulse. Why, uh, what is the reason for this? Pulse deficit. Sir, pulse, de no. pulse deficit more than 10 suggests uh, can be in more in favor of atrial fibrillation, sir. Okay. Generally, we see more. What is the, what could be the reason? Any drug? Drug already patient. Sir, might, by, might have been start, sir. Patient was uh, hospitalized outside, sir, for uh, two for two drug, weeks. Patient have controlled. She might be on digoxin or, or some reason. beta blockers, sir. Okay. I'll carry on. Um, respiratory rate was 18 per minute. It was regular thoraco-abdominal pattern. Uh, temperature was 97 degree Fahrenheit. 
and the JVP was uh, was elevated. It was nine nine centimeters. The A wave was absent, and there was prominent V waves. Uh, sorry, doctor, I was not uh, following for yes, five sir. minutes. Doctor, yes, call. sir. Uh, you can come again with your pulse definition. Uh, yes, sir. Pulse findings. Yes, sir. Uh, the pulse was seventy six per minute. It was irregularly irregular, variable in volume. No special character. It is felt bilaterally in all peripheral pulses equally. There's no radio radial and no radio femoral delay. The vessel wall, the vessel wall uh, was not thickened. The pulse deficit was fourteen. Uh, the B. Some special character. This patient has no special character. Uh, yes, any special character of the pulse and the relevant diagnosis to tell from six or seven. Sir, uh, sir, we can have uh, anachronistic pulse, sir. Pulse is far away at tardis. uh which is a low which is a small volume uh, slow rising late peaking pulsar it can be seen in uh, severe aortic stenosis sir <laughs> we can have pulses dysphoria sir where uh, you can have uh, one peak in two peaks in systole sir it can be seen in uh, severe ar or uh, aortic stenosis with aortic regurgitation you see for the character of the pulse sir uh, character we should look for in the uh, carotid sir Uh, experience what are the conditions sir in severe aortic regurgitation or aortic regurgitation with aortic stenosis sir or you can even see in uh, uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy sir okay uh, you, you can get the uh, pulses uh, by gemini sir where you have uh, a premature pulse followed by uh, compensatory pass pulses paradox pulses paradox is uh, is a, it's actually a, a bp finding sir blood pressure finding where uh, there is an exaggerated inspiratory fall of uh, uh, of more than 10 mm of mercury of systolic blood pressure which is seen in conditions like uh, constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade uh, in case of acute severe asthma in case of uh, svc obstruction tension pneumothorax we can see sir okay uh, for the pulse you can go ahead with the presentation okay sir sir uh, the blood pressure was 104 per uh, 70 mm of mercury in right upper limb 100 per 70 mm of mercury in left upper limb 110 per 75 mm of mercury in right lower limb 112 per 70 mm of mercury in left lower limb so the average three readings of blood pressure in right up what is the volume sir volume is a uh, normal volume sir variable volume we told variable sir, volume or uh, uh, pulse volume is variable sir yes, sir so uh, what determines the volume of the pulse sir uh, the the pulse pressure de determines it sir okay if it is severe mitral stenosis uh, what volume of the pulse you are expecting sir uh, low small volume sir here it is uh, by and large it's a large volume it's a normal volume normal volume sir yes sir okay pulse pressure it's variable normal range yes sir okay so okay proceed Sir, our respiratory rate is 18 per minute. Temperature is 97 degree Fahrenheit. What this is, sir, rule ruling out here. Can it be a severe aortic regurgitation? Can be like this, severe aortic regurgitation. Sir, a severe aortic usually associated with wide pulse pressure, sir. Another peripheral signs of aortic. And peripheral signs would be this, sir. Not yeah. there. Okay. Here, you know, anachronistic pulse is not here. No, sir. And uh, atrial fibrillation, variable volume, sir. Okay. Proceed, bro. Sir, the JVP is elevated. It is nine centimeters, sir. A wave is absent, and there is prominent V wave, sir. Prominent? The prominent V wave, sir. What are the causes of prominent V waves in JVP? Sir, uh, it can be because of tricuspid regurgitation, sir. It case okay. It can be because of uh, ASD also will have prominent V waves. Uh, any uh, uh next uh total anomalous pulmonary venous. Rain is also it can have a, a prominent V wave, sir. Any volume overloaded state can have for prominent V wave, sir. All volume will not produce prominent V waves. Okay. So okay, here there, uh, there is a prominent V wave. V wave. Absent V wave. Absent V wave. Sir, cardiovascular system examination on inspection. The trachea appears to be in midline. The chest appears bilaterally symmetrical. There is no precord. So there is no precordial bulge. The apical impulse is not seen. There is parasternal heave which is visible. There is no other visible pulsations. No dilated veins or scars. 
on palpation the trachea is confirmed to be in midline the apical impulse is felt in the left to fifth intercostal space half inch lateral to the left to mid clavicular line it is uh, variable in nature and is associated with a diastolic thrill uh, a grade 3 parasternal heave is present a palpable p uh, we go uh, uh, some details about the apical impulse okay yes sir uh, what do you do normal apical impulse characters so no, normal apical impulse is only felt in a single intercostal space it is felt uh, half inch medial to the left in uh, left uh, mid clavicular line and in okay. sir apical medial of less than 1 less than 2.5 cm square sir yes okay uh, then it will be uh, it will be less than uh, one third of uh, it will be le less than uh, half of systole sir and uh, one third of systole sir one third of systole sir less than one third of systole uh, obtain uh, one intercostal space or less than 2.5 2.5 cm sir what will be the character character uh, different types of uh, apical impulse you know of yes sir uh, so we can have tapping tapping apical impulse heaving or hyperdynamic or double apical impulse sir okay so uh, in normal how it will be there will be a gentle tap only gentle. okay uh, gentle tap tapping apical impulse is reserved for mitral stenosis sir mitral stenosis here uh, there is no tapping apical impulse no sir it is variable sir it is variable okay uh what are the conditions you will get hyperdynamic apical impulse so in conditions like uh, aortic regurgitation mitral regurgitation uh, ventricular septal defects volume overload in high high output states no sir volume overload conditions how will be the apical impulse in the hyperdynamic uh, apical impulse it will be diffuse or what it will diffuse it will be diffuse apical impulse sir okay and uh, it will be occupying more than one intercostal space okay how will be the heaving apical impulse and what are the conditions you will get heaving apical impulse uh, uh, will be occupying only one intercostal space sir but the duration but uh, the duration will be prolonged will be more than 2/3 of uh, systole um, and uh, conditions in which it is seen is uh, in case of uh, aortic stenosis in case of systemic hypertension coarctation of aorta pressure overload condition sir okay how will you time uh, the apical impulse you are telling less than 1/3 of systole 2/3 uh, one how will you how are you going to time it Sir, we can uh, simultaneously palpate the carotid, sir, and uh, we can time it to the carotids. Okay, good. Okay. Sir, uh, grade three parasternal heave is present, sir. Uh, palpable uh, P two is present in the pulmonary area. Epigastric pulsation is felt with the tip of the thumb. Heave in place. Sir, heave can imply a left, uh, a left, a uh, right ventricular enlargement or a left atrial enlargement, sir. Usually, parasternal heave occurs in a mitral valve disease or aortic valve disease. Sir, mitral valve disease. Okay, your, your history, your atrial fibrillation, and parasternal heave, everything is pointing towards here. Mitral, mitral valve disease. It is a valve or disease. Okay. Right. Okay. Sir, epigastric pulsation is felt with the tip of the thumb. Uh, uh, there is no carotid thrill. Sir. Your uh, sub. Uh, sub public uh, sub cified you are uh, palpating no with your thumb yes sir Why? yes sir so sir, uh, sir if it is present if the pulsations are present prominently with the tip of the thumb it can imply that uh, there is a uh, is because of uh, right ventricular enlargement sir if it is uh, prominently felt or the pulp of the thumb it can be because of aortic pulsations sir no Okay, sir. In any uh, case, like, sir. In my case, it in is my like case, it, it was felt at the tip at the tip of the thumb, sir. So probably because of uh, right ventricular enlargement, sir. Parasternal heave. Yes, sir. Uh, apart from the right ventricle, which uh, structure can also ca cause the parasternal heave? Sir, uh, left atrial enlargement, sir. Okay. So uh, on percussion, the right heart border corresponds to the right sternal border. The left heart border corresponds to the apical impulse. Uh, palpable, sir. Yes, sir. Palpable. You told something. Palpable. Yes, sir. Palpable P two. What does it suggest? Sir, uh, can be pulmonary hypertension, sir. A pulmonary artery dilatation. What 
what are the uh, clinical features of pulmonary hypertension sir pulmonary hypertension it can have an elevated jvp with a prominent a wave it oh, can have sir prominent a waves you can get but yeah. AV, avp need to be elevated okay okay uh, sir prominent a waves uh, there can be a uh, loud loud uh, p2 a palpable p2 uh, there can be uh, parasternal heave yeah. you then you are going to an auscultation then coming back to palpation you should not uh, go like that you should go in an order okay, sir. then so there can be uh, there can be visible pulsations felt uh, seen in the uh, pulmonary area there can be uh, a parasternal heave there can be palpable p2 uh there can be uh, loud loud p2 there can be ejection systolic murmur sir with a uh, uh, narrowly split uh, s2 sir if it is severe you can also have an early diastolic murmur graham steel murmur can be seen uh, auscultated sir systolic murmur can you get can you get a systolic murmur in pulmonary area sir yeah as yes, a rejection systolic murmur can be heard sir oh okay. proceed on percussion the right heart border corresponds to right sternal border left uh, heart border corresponds to the apical impulse liver dullness is uh, is in uh, right fifth intercostal space dullness in the uh, left second intercostal space up to 2 cm from the left sternal border is uh, noticed auscultation uh, auscult auscultating in the mitral area the first heart sound is uh, heard but it is variable the second heart sound is heard an opening snap is heard sir variable intensity Va variable intensity okay uh, second heart sound is heard uh, opening snap is heard uh, no other heart sounds are heard uh, a rough rumbling low pitched mid diastolic murmur of grade 4 okay. is heard with the your health opening snap yes sir it is systolic sound or a diastolic sound it's a diastolic sound sir what are the other diastolic sounds you know of sir uh, can third heart sound fourth heart sound uh opening snap um we can have pericardial knock good. uh tumor plops good. okay very good uh opening snap how will you differentiate from uh, s3 sir uh, opening snap is uh uh so coming from differentiation with uh, with respect to sight it is heard at the apex or just to me medial to the apex uh but it can also be heard all over the precordium and it is a uh, it is a high pitched sound s3 is a low pitched sound so s3 is heard with the uh, bell of the stethoscope whereas uh, opening snap can be heard with the diaphragm on uh, standing uh, the uh, a to os gap increases whereas s3 can disappear okay. so what is the importance of opening snap auscultation what are the points you can infer when you are auscultating opening snap the so, opening snap implies the mitral valve is pliable sir and it's not uh, calcified so a rough rumbling low no, low pitch sir opening snap I mean, open, first thing is you are told that if the uh, hearing a opening snap and a loud uh, first heart sound then it can be a pliable valve okay so this patient will can be a candidate for a ptm so probably we can be confirming the echo okay right that yes. one thing another important point for os opening snap opening snap implies how will you uh, clean it that mitral stenosis is severe uh, sir i can also uh, tell us about the severity of mitral stenosis sir the duration of a to o to a to os gap uh if it is less, small if it is less severity of mitral stenosis how clean how clinically will tell that mitral stenosis is severe sir we can tell with respect to a, uh, a to os gap if it is uh, it is inversely proportional to severity sir on the a to os gap what comes uh sir the duration of murmur patient has recurrent paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea it goes in favor of a severe mitral stenosis okay yes, apart from this uh from auscultation will it tell it is a severe mitral stenosis sir a longer duration of murmur first duration of the murmur longer duration on front murmur uh, it will suggest, uh, suggest a severe mitral stenosis second point is shorter a to os gap a to os gap 
then what third is the point third point is so pa- development of pulmonary hypertension since of pulmonary hypertension indirectly will tell you that mitral stenosis is severe okay yes sir so, uh, uh, yes sir what about the atrial fibrillation presence of atrial fibrillation so in presence of atrial fibrillation uh, you will have irregularly irregular pulse and oh, absence of ev presence of atrial fibrillation uh need not need not need not the weird only three okay sir what are atrial gap and presence of pulmonary fibrillation only these three points will suggest to you severe mitral stenosis fibrillation need not okay sir okay proceed uh, a rough rumbling low pitched mid diastolic murmur of grade 4 is heard with the bell of the stethoscope with opening snap and no no pre systolic accentuation the patient in left lateral position breath held in expiration uh, and a soft blowing high pitched pan systolic murmur of grade 3 is heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope like you should ask question in examination what are the other condition apart from mitral stenosis what are the other conditions you will get a mid diastolic murmur so it can also be seen in tricuspid stenosis it can be seen in murmurs like uh, uh, caricoms murmur austin flint's murmur uh, rightens murmur it can be seen in uh, atrial myxomas atrial thrombus uh, in case of cork triatri atom it can be seen in uh, uh, increased flow across uh, mitral valve or tricuspid valve conditions like uh, like uh, asd vsd pda uh uh mitral regurgitation aortic regurgitation conditions like that sir flow murmurs they are called flow murmurs flow murmurs okay so can this be a flow murmur sir uh, we are having opening snap sir so uh, more more in favor of an organic murmur then uh, uh, you are going to describe a systolic murmur also no yes sir so, both mid diastolic murmur and what is do you describe a systolic murmur sir it's a low low it's a soft blowing high pitched uh, pan systolic murmur sir uh grade 3 which is heard at the diaphragm of the stethoscope patient in a uh, left lateral position breath held in expiration sir 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 i am sir i am not able to hear sir the uh, very conducted that murmur pan systolic murmur sir it is connected uh, it's connected to the axilla sir so you have two different murmurs here okay one is mid diastolic murmur the other yes, uh, would be a uh, pan systolic murmur i say that mitral regurgitation is severe and this mid diastolic murmur is a flow murmur sir uh, uh, one my this uh, opening snap is present Actually, sir This is the significant lesion or dominant lesion here. Whether it's mitral stenosis is dominant or mitral regurgitation is dominant. Uh, sir, uh, opening snap is present, sir. And at the same time, uh, uh, diastolic murmur is associated with thrill, sir. One minute. The opening snap will not tell you it is a dominant mitral stenosis. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, uh, suppose uh, we are in mitral regurgitation. Okay. How will okay, be the sir. sir, apical impulse in mild regurgitation. If it is severe, it will be a uh, uh, down and out, sir. Okay. Here, how how is the apical impulse? Here, it is only out, sir. Okay. So it is going against the severe mitral regurgitation, dominant MR. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, any other points in favor of uh, uh, dominant mitral stenosis? Sir, uh, it is associated with diastolic thrill, sir. Proceed. Ah, uh, tricuspid area. First heart sound, second heart sound, third. Ah, uh, no added sounds. Ah, uh, a grade three high pitched, soft blowing pan systolic murmur is heard in the lower left sternal border with the diaphragm of the stethoscope with breath held in inspiration, and the patient is in supine position. Aortic and neo aortic area. Ah, uh, first and second heart sound is heard. And no mum. Uh, left parasternal area also, tricuspid area. Yes, sir. What is it? Sir, uh, might be because of tricuspid regurgitation, sir. Might be because of which can be because of pulmonary hypertension, sir. Tricuspid regurgitation. 
common cause for a uh, acquired valvular heart disease i would i would go with a uh, rheumatic uh, etiology suppose this patient has only mitral regurgitation suppose okay, only mitral regurgitation what etiology will you go sir it can be degenerative sir it can be uh, can also be degenerative the patient has mitral stenosis if the patient has mitral stenosis what yes, is your first diagnosis etiology rheumatic rheumatic okay unless okay. in other way suppose if the mitral stenosis is not there then only the etiology becomes difficult for this if the patient is not giving hst or suggestive of rheumatic fever if it is a pure mitral regurgitation then we have to go for other etiologies what from rheumatic when the diagnosis of mitral stenosis is there our etiology becomes very easy what are the other conditions that can cause mitral stenosis apart from rheumatic sir we can have congenital mitral stenosis sir uh we can have uh, a cause causes like uh, uh sle rheumatoid arthritis we can have it in uh, uh, storage disorders mucopolysaccharidosis sir we can have it in drug induced conditions like uh, methicillin exposure sir all uh, contribute how many percentage total might sir uh, rheumatic is the most common cause for uh, mitral stenosis sir sir uh, patient is having pulmonary hypertension sir and uh, patient is having for the atrial fibrillation you are not able to uh, have the duration or what what the duration of the, i told you only three points for severe mitral stenosis yes sir so because of atrial fibrillation you will be finding it very difficult huh? yes sir duration of atrial fibrillation is there sir so, so it is difficult to long run people no cycles you have to take long cycles long cycles the duration of murmur is uh, longer only uh, longer sir murmur hypertension so severe mitral stenosis and uh, apart from that in hst the patient is giving of hst of nigha class 4 sir but not nigha class 4 paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and orthopnea severe okay sir how will you describe moderate mr sir a patient does not have uh, uh, apical uh, apical impulse is not uh, down and out sir and uh, sir i am telling mr i am telling it's a mild mr so you are invoking the diagnosis of moderate mr here sir it can be mild to moderate mr sir how can you tell the constant it can be it cannot be a severe mr okay it can be a mild mr also okay it can be point of your moderate so how does it make a different uh, in treatment is different mitral stenosis severe mild mr mitral stenosis severe moderate mr uh, you are going to change the treatment protocol yes sir if it is associated with moderate to severe uh, mitral regurgitation we have to go for mitral valve replacement sir otherwise we can try uh, commissurotomy sir balloon balloon commissurotomy the, there is no significant mitral regurgitation we can go for ptmc okay for putting in stand commissurotomy right yes sir yes sir uh i would i would like to go ahead with following investigation blood invest to say that it is a pulmonary hypertension here you told yes sir what are the points to be severe pulmonary sir uh, 
patient is having a, a, a grade three parasternal heave, sir, with loud P two, sir, and uh, an injection systolic murmur. Okay, proceed. Uh, sir, I would like to go ahead with following, following investigations. Blood investigations like complete blood count, uh, serum urea creatinine, uh, serum electrolytes, liver function test, C-reactive protein, ESR, uh, PTINR, anti-streptolysin O titers, ECG, chest X-ray and uh, echocardiogram, sir. You discuss the ECG. Sir, uh, this is the ECG of the patient. Uh, the speed of the paper is 25 millimeters per second. Uh, the standardization is uh, 10 millimeters equals 1 millivolt. Uh, the QRS, the RR interval is irregularly irregular with coarse uh, fibrillatory waves are seen. Uh, the heart rate is approximately 130 per minute. There is uh, right axis deviation. Uh, uh, rate is 130, ventricular rate. Ventricular rate, no, you are speaking about yes, the sir. ventricular rate. Ventricular rate is. Sir, uh, I count, I took a... Uh, uh, I measured the number of uh, QRS complexes in uh, 6 seconds, sir, and I multiplied it with uh, 10. Okay. What is this uh, full ECG recording time? Sir, this... 10 seconds. Okay, so, sir. you count the full and multiply by 6. That will be more easier. Okay? So, okay, sir. So... Okay, sir. So here it is 130. Told that patient had only 76. No, 76 heart rate. Yes, sir. Uh, this uh, I, I examined the patient later, sir. This was when ad an admission they had taken the ECG, sir. So you can always repeat also, and they show that uh, after treatment ECG also. Now it is not a stick. Uh, this is before treatment. And this is before. Last, uh, pulse percentage after treatment. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there is now narrow QRS complexes and uh, small R and, uh, S complex in uh, one in AVL. Uh, my impression is atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate and there is a uh, left to posterior fascicle block. So, uh, this is the chest X-ray of the patient. Uh, X-ray is, uh, is in PA view. It is not rotated. There is adequate penetration and adequate exposure. Uh, the trachea is in midline. Uh, splaying of carina is seen. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is cephalization of the pulmonary vasculature. Uh, the, there is cardiomegaly which is seen. The uh, cardiothoracic uh, ratio is more than 1.55. Uh, uh, in the left heart border, uh, the prominent uh, uh, pulmonary bay, sir. In the X-ray, Yes, sir. Uh, what are the you you enumerate the how will you find left atrial enlargement in X-ray? What are the stages and what are the findings you are finding in your X-ray? Sir, uh, in case of uh, left atrial enlargement, we can uh, we can have uh, a prominent left atrial uh, appendage, sir. In case of mitral stenosis, we can have uh, mitralization of the left heart border where we can have a smaller aortic knuckle, a prominent uh, pulmonary bay, and a prominent uh, left atrial appendage, and a normal or a, a, or a smaller uh, left ventricle, sir. Here, I'm able to see a prominent uh, pulmonary bay area and a prominent left atrial appendage. Uh, and uh, I'm able to see, you see in this X-ray a double density sign or a double bubble sign, which can indicate left atrial enlargement, sir. And... Uh, Sir? Why did you have in there? Sir? Karina, why did you? Yes, sir, splaying, splaying of Karina scene, sir. How will you right atrial enlargement in X-ray? Right atrial enlargement... Uh... Sir, uh, sir I, I don't know, sir, I did X-ray. More than two intercostal spaces, okay? Sir? After more than two intercostal spaces. Okay, sir. What is the straightening of left heart border due to in mitral stenosis? Sir, it, it is because of uh, 
less prominent aortic knuckle, sir. And uh, pulmonary hypertension causing pulmonary dilatation and a prominent pulmonary bay area. Uh, prominent left atrial appendage, sir. Okay. And a normal or underfilled left ventricle, sir. Normal or underfilled. Okay. These are the causes of the... Okay. Uh, these are the echo findings of the patient. Uh, the patient uh, had uh, tachycardia or irregular and irregular rhythm during study. The uh, AML PML was thickened. The AML dooming was present. PML mobility was restricted. The uh, left atrium was grossly dilated. The mitral valve orifice area was 0.9 centimeter square. The mitral valve pressure half time was 260 meters uh, milliseconds. There was moderate mitral regurgitation. First, I would like to go through restriction for uh, of one, 1 1.5 liters per day, salt restricted diet, uh, keep her in propped up position, give her uh, nasal oxygen or positive pressure ventilation if required. Uh, I would like to go with medical measures like rate control for the atrial fibrillation, giving be her beta blockers, uh, digoxin. Um, I would like to anticoagulate her with first heparin followed by uh, acid, uh, warfarin analogs. Not and calcium What calcium blocker you are preferring? Sir, uh, for the atrial fibrillation's rate control, we can give uh, calcium channel blockers like uh, verapamil and diltiasm, sir. Uh, we are not giving amiodarone here. Sir, uh, amiodarone can be given for uh, uh, rate and rhythm control, sir. But uh, because uh, because uh, she is not having any LV systolic dysfunction, at the same time, uh, she is going to have permanent uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, it is not of uh, big use, sir. So, in the uh, left atrium is very much enlarged and your and is permanent atrial fibrillation. So you are going for a rate control rather than a rhythm control. Rhythm so control. The blockers. Okay. A long term amyotron will cause side effect also. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to anticoagulate her and then uh, give uh, anti failure treatment like uh, uh, IV loop diuretics, uh, AC inhibitors, okay. AR. What drugs sir, do you use? What drugs we do you can use for anticoagulation? Sir, uh, we can use warfarin analogs, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, you know that oral anticoagulation, apixabon, like the treatments are there, no? They were also yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why you are not preferring here? Sir, uh, we do not have enough evidence regarding uh, oral uh, Anti yeah, those kind of anticoagulants, sir. Uh, and only acid uh, warfarin analogs have seen to be more effective in anticoagulation in case of alveolar. No in rheumatic sir, fever, we can... in prosthetic, well, no, if you are going to replace this, your, your treatment is mitral valve replacement. If you are going yes, to replace, you will give only warfarin or acetrom. You will not, you will not prefer that to Novax, sir. Will you prefer no, or sir. not? No, sir. Not. Okay, you have to go for warfarin acid home and you will uh, titrate the drug based on what? Sir, uh, based on the PTNR, sir. What will be the range? Sir, uh, for a mitral valve replacement, it can be 2.5 to 3.5 range. Okay. And what yes. other conditions will you use that COVAX? Sir, you can use it in pulmonary thromboembolisms. Um, you can use it in... Uh, in case of non-valvular AF uh, stroke prevention, you can use, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, 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 we can give uh, uh, rheumatic uh, fever prophylaxis, antibiotics like uh, penicillin. Evaporating in this patient for uh, rate control, evaporating. Sir, we, uh, we can use, sir. Huh? Evaporating, we, evaporating. Evaporating, we can use, sir. Beta blockers are more preferable, sir. I will I must evaporate in evaporating. You have heard that evaporating? Evaporating, yes, sir. A funny okay. current inhibitor. Sir, it is a IF channel inhibitor, sir. Funny current inhibitors. No road. Sir? 
Club has no role in airtel superlation. ஒன் <laughs> Sir, since she has developed valvular heart disease, we can give it for 40 years or lifelong, sir. Sir, sir in this patient, lifelong, sir. Uh, actually, when we are diagnosing acute rheumatic fever, okay, we have to tell them that uh, parental antibiotic uh, is more effective than the oral. Oral. Right. Okay, what do you understand it? ஒருபிலேஷன் <laughs> sir atrial fibrillation can be uh, sir it can be paroxysmal uh, permanent uh, sorry persistent long standing persistent and permanent sir sir another classification acute and chronic acute chronic okay sir so like that so in in, in chronic rheumatic chronic rheumatic disease what will be our aim it is a rhythm control or rate control sir a rate control sir we cannot uh, revert back this uh, to a normal rhythm so you Uh, we cannot do any acute uh, my acute uh, replacement we can do that so we have to end in the uh, rate rate rate, rate. Okay. okay so what are the complications of uh, atrial uh, atrial fibrillation sir atrial fibrillation can result this can result in uh, thromboembolic phenomenon causing uh, uh, cerebrovascular accidents and uh, embolic em- embolic to other end organs sir like mesentery or pulmonary circulation it then uh hmm. atrial fibrillation sir other complications of atrial fibrillation sir okay this patient uh, what you are going to do sir uh, and also well, you told the fluid restriction you have given 1.5 liters so the lady patient is volume overloaded So, pain rate is much higher. So, one point pain is a little bit higher. So, you can uh, one liter. Pain only up to one liter. Okay. In seated patient, will be around seven fifty ml. So, here okay, up to sir. one liter, we can do. One point pain is a little bit higher. And also, after controlling, we can increase. But generally, in the, in the presence of pain rate, you know, this one one liter is sufficient. And also, okay, daily sir. weight monitoring is also very important. So, daily weight monitoring will give us clue whether patient is responding to our treatment or not, and we can. increase the dose of diuretic also according to the weight monitor salt restriction or okay how to do okay with okay. so okay. final treatment surgical management yes, sir surgical we can go for mitral valve replacement sir okay. you are replacing what are the other surgical modalities now? apart from mitral valve replacement do you know any other form of surgical modalities given for uh... sir uh, we can do commissurotomy open or closed sir okay. uh, we cannot do that no here because of a yes, because of a moderate mr is there sir my we have to go on for mitral valve replacement okay can we go for a mitral valve repair sir uh, mitral valve repair usually in a mitral valve prolapse okay not okay, in a sir. rheumatic okay, okay sir the mitral valve replacement okay sir sir mitral stenosis can result in uh, atrial fibrillation sir and uh, left atrial uh, clot formation which can result in uh, thromboembolic phenomenon can result in infective endocarditis 
higher risk can okay. result in uh, left atrial enlargement which can produce uh, uh, compression over other structures like uh, it can cause otner syndrome where there's hoarseness of voice because of compression of recurrent laryngeal nerve it can cause dysphagia because of compression of esophagus or it can cause uh, left uh, lower uh, bronchus uh, collapse which can result in recurrent respiratory tract infections uh, bronchiectasis can result in pulmonary edema right heart failure sir ஆன்டிகோயாக்ளன்ஸ் <laughs> it can be because of pulmonary infarction in case of mitral stenosis uh, in low cardiac output it can be because of pulmonary edema pulmonary congestion sir your patient has hemoptysis no sir your patient has no you give no history of hemoptysis no no sir not no history of hemoptysis you are sir yes sir yes Sir, till what time we should continue, sir? Sir, sir, what's what, what time should uh, till continue, sir? We can continue, sir. If you want, we can continue, sir. I am have... finished the discussion. Must be finished by ten thirty also, sir. You finished the discussion, sir? Yes, sir. I finished, sir. Elangerian, sir. I also finished, sir. No more questions. we can wind up if, uh, if there is yeah. no questions we can wind up sir shall we conclude sir yes sir yes uh, sir stand well sir she has prepared well and you have and questions as well all the best sir we yeah thank you i think sir. she was answering promptly to the, all the questions probably get the conference of uh, this one make you to have a more conference to appear for the exam probably you just to touch upon the important areas where you are not able to answer note down those points and try to find out the answers for those questions and try to make it more complete of your presentation and answering also okay yes sir yes sir sure yes. sir thank you sir yeah thank you and thank you dr ranjalin sir you, and thank you sir thank you sir for wonderfully a discussion about this common problem of exam oriented case of rheumatic heart disease with mitral stenosis with the complications and uh, appreciate dr ramya for wonderful presentation and discussion also thank you everyone of you thank you good night thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.